I'm incredibly irritated. <laughs> For those of you who have already seen this video, I'm sorry. My sister literally woke me up and was like, girl, do you know like a good minute of a video is like no audio? And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I decided to go ahead and refilm this intro because I don't know what's wrong with the first intro. Honestly, I can't fix it. Uh, but anyway, what's up guys? I'm Bria and welcome to my channel. So I also just woke up, like literally, I just like crawled out of bed. Um, so this video is gonna be me kind of going through some seasonal jobs that I found on Coolworks that I think are interesting, maybe worth your time to apply to. Um, I do want to preface um, that part of this video by saying two things. One, um, right now we're kind of in a shoulder month um, where a lot of the jobs that are being posted are just summer vacancies that companies are trying to fill before the end of their summer season. Um, so that means that typically the summer season for a lot of places will be over at the latest mid-October. So they're looking to fill their vacancies for the remaining summer. And that could mean that you would only be at a place for maybe at most two months. So some of these jobs may not even be worth your time in trying to like pay to get to. So keep that in mind. I have been seeing an increase of like the true winter positions where you'll be, you know, at a place through spring. Um, I've started to see those be posted um, and surely in the next few weeks, you'll see even more of those jobs be posted. So keep an eye out for that if you're looking for somewhere where you could be for, you know, four months or, or more. Um, secondly, really important, um, the jobs that I'm talking about today, okay, are not jobs that I have like an in with. Like I don't know anyone at these places that can get you a job. I, I have no extra information. So, so don't ask me in the comments to get you a job because I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't have that, that sort of power. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that's really all I wanted to mention. I'm so upset. All right, let me go so I can hopefully try to upload this before I have to go to work in a couple hours. <sighs> Is this screen too bright? Should I have... S <sighs> I don't know. Ooh, it's the ride of your life. <laughs> Okay, so it has taken me a stupid amount of time to actually get to this point. Like, it's probably been, like, hours since the last little, since the little intro clip. Um, but, yeah, we're finally here, and I'm just, like, pan holding on. All right, so I've taken some notes um, about some places that I picked out to talk about. Um, I have the tabs up here for some, the um, places I want to talk about. And we're first gonna start with a Stanford or Stanford Sierra Conference Center. So I've seen this um, a few times um, in my hunt for a job. Uh, I think the the main reason why I haven't ever chosen this place is that the they're only open for a very short window of time um, from April to June and then from September to November. So obviously it's it's, we're in August. Um, so if you're looking at this job, you would be working from September to November, which is a short amount of time. Yes, I will say that, which is why I don't, I haven't really taken this job um, seriously for myself personally. Um, but it's got some really good benefits to it. So let's, let's look and see. So first of all, this is in like the South Lake Tahoe area of California. So there's a little map here. Um, where it's it's kind of struggling, but Lake Tahoe, um, and then like the little conference centers right there. So look at all these happy people going bowling, woohoo, bowling, yeah. So um, let's talk about the benefits. So first of all, what stood out to me, and it's like one of the main reasons why I chose this job to talk about is because the housing is free. Housing is free. Lakeside um, cabins, rustic lake view cabins. Um, it is shared accommodations, I think, 
typically, especially if a job is offering free housing, you can you can pretty much bet that it's going to be shared. Um, one of the things, though, about this that I noticed is that um, it says most cabins have bathrooms, though a few have a shared bathroom shower cluster a stand's third away, which means you're going to be going outside to take a poo. That's what that means. Um, also, food is free. That's pretty nice. Um, and it does seem like they, they do, if, you know, this all this information is to be believed, uh, and I'm hoping that they would be honest. Um, it does appear that um, they do have offerings for vegetarians and vegans and gluten-free options as well, which is great. I find that a lot of these places um, that offer food, of course, they're kind of like, ah, we give you food. You better be happy with what we give you. Um, so that's thing, free food, free housing. Uh, wages start at 15. So with this job, it looks like everyone does pretty much the same thing. Like they have this, the job title that they have available to apply for is um, all purpose staff, uh, which pretty much means it looks like it means what it what it says all purpose so like you're doing housekeeping you're doing food service you're doing other things um there's a good amount of information here and i have to give them props um that it you can kind of tell that they're used to having seasonal workers because they really put a lot of information up front um kind of giving you an idea of what to expect you can kind of see that um here um under the our job section but just going back to um, their profile, so Lake Tahoe, Lake Tahoe area in California, uh, I think it'd be a cool place, um, September to November, not too hot, not too cold. Um, again, we just started at 15. Looks like there is an end of season bonus. Um, and then you do have access to um, different recreational facilities, um, kayaks, paddle boards, sailboats, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so here's, I think this is kind of funny. Once you're here in Settled In, you'll find that there's very little reason to go into town, but opportunities frequently arise. Staff who choose to drive here are good about offering rides to staff without vehicles. So basically, they, they're they saying they don't have company shuttles, which is like, you know, it's fine. Uh, so if you're coming, if you're going there without a vehicle, you're going to be needing to find some friends that have cars because I don't care what these companies say, you you will have to leave property. You will you can't just stay there for two months straight and never leave property. Even if um, you're someone that doesn't need a whole lot, I mean, unless they have a grocery store, you're gonna need like snacks and shampoo and conditioner and shaving cream. So it's just like, yeah, you're gonna need to leave property. Um, so they don't have a shuttle. There's no, that I've seen, there's no public transportation. So there's that. Um, yeah, this seems like a pretty good opportunity for those who it wouldn't cost too much for you to get there. And I say that because, again, they're only looking for September to November. Um, I would go ahead and be putting in your application now if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but that's at best two and a half months. So if you can get out there, um, it looks like your um, your transportation there will be the most expensive thing. And then after that, you're pretty much smooth sailing until you got to go back home. So that's the Stanford Sierra Conference. Oh, uh, the old lodge that was built in 1932. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of like log cabins, but I have to say they have a really good feel to them. I, li I like when they add pictures. Like part of me, like... <laughs> Just just a tangent. So part of me, when you get on cool works, you'll see jobs where like this, like they give you a ton of information, they give you a ton of pictures, but then there are some places where it's like they're trying to deceive you. Like they give you one picture. And places that only give you one picture, it's typically always an outdoor picture. Like a picture that's of the outdoors, of nature, not even of any of their facilities. And it always seems so sus to me, like I remember this one place, I forget where it was, but like the information sounded good, like the job sounded nice, but then like the only picture that they provided was like some nature scene that didn't show any part of their actual facilities and property. So when I actually looked up the place, I'm like, oh, this is why, because like it looks kind of dingy here. 
So, yeah. Be upfront. Okay, so the next place is something that I was actually um, really interested in. Um, let me get to the, the profile. So it's Hotel Jerome. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it in uh, Aspen, Colorado. So if you don't, if you guys don't already know, I'm pretty partial to Colorado in general. Um, I've never been to Aspen. Um, you all probably know I worked in Estes Park, Colorado, twice, and then I went to Breckenridge, Colorado, which I love Breckenridge. Um, so let's see, let's see, let's see what we got here. Um, Hotel Jerome. Um, so that's like dead in like dead center in aspen so you've got more things within walking distance you can kind of see the map here it looks pretty congested um looks like a nice place of course i feel like aspen is probably right up there like veil as like place a place where you're gonna get a lot of bougie people um so if you're in a guest um, or customer facing position you know, that may lead to some fun interactions. I remember even working at Breckenridge, like you just, I just met some of the most entitled bougie people, I swear. Um, but let's see, I have some notes. I've taken about some of these places. So when it comes to housing, it's a little bit more complicated than the Stanford Sierra Conference with their free housing. Um, so, all the options for housing are within a 21 mile radius of the hotel. Great, that's not terrible, but that likely means that you're gonna need to have a car. Um, so just keep that in mind. If this, you know, it's something that you end up being interested in. Um, what I do like is that they do offer single and double occupancy units. So obviously, ah, ah, ah. Something just like flew in my face. You see, this is why I don't like leaving this door cracked. Oh my God. It just like flew at me. It's fine. Um, so what I like about this is that they do offer the single occupancy units for those of us who ain't about that shared dorm life. Um, obviously that does mean it's gonna be more expensive. So down here you can see um the rent range is pretty, pretty vast. There's a there's a whole canyon between three and nine hundred dollars a month so i mean even if you were to assume that eight and nine hundred dollars a month is what you would be paying for a single occupancy unit i mean that's still hundreds oh hundreds of dollars in between three and like eight and nine so i don't i don't know what you you'd be looking at there i, I mean it's it's good information but that's a vast canyon between three and nine hundred dollars. But at least you have the option, like if you don't care about the shared units and um, you're trying to save a little bit of money. Um, so as far as meals, it seems like the only meals they provide are lunch. Um, the Jerome provides lunch daily to our team members at our staff cafeteria. So it seems like I'm assuming then that dinner would be on you, breakfast would be on you to provide, but that's pretty great. Um, so. Um, transportation, um, most of the ski resorts in that area, so like Vail, Aspen, um, or I mean like the, the cities that are um, ski towns or whatever you want to call them. Um, so like Breckenridge, um, like Copper Mountain, Keystone, um, Aspen, um, Vail, a lot of those areas have decent transportation um, systems and Aspen is a walkable town. You can kind of see that from the map. Um, so I would just say, like, if you're concerned about transportation, maybe you don't have a car or maybe you don't want to drive your car up there, I would just make sure that you can get to and from work um, because it seems like within Aspen, you can like walk and get to places you're trying to go to. But if you're if your housing is 21 miles, um, it's with, it says within a 21 mile radius. So you could probably find housing close enough um, to the hotel. Um, and, and I would just talk to them like, hey, I don't have a car. Um, I need housing that's a bit closer to the hotel. So I think transportation, you know, you can take the bus. 
my experience, even being in Breckenridge, those buses are really timely. So I would, I'm always assuming that this is going to be pretty much similar to that. Um, so this is more of someone who's looking for like a town. They don't want to be 40 minutes away from the nearest grocery store. Um, this is, this is good for that. Like you have a walkable town where you can go to the grocery store and the post office and you don't have to worry about how you're going to get to where you're going without a car or anything like that. So that's cool. Um, let's see. No issues with cell service or internet access. Some of these places can be kind of like that. I don't think the Sierra conference had any issues with that. Um, Yeah, I know some of the places that I looked at recently had some issues with cell service. Um, but yeah, this is Hotel Jerome. Um, I think I thought about, let me look at some of the jobs. <sighs> I had the door open and I'm getting too many bugs in here. Um, so this is the information about kind of their seasons. Um, so I think what's really cool about Hotel Jerome is that um, they do offer year round and seasonal positions. So um, this is this may be a good idea for someone who wants to dip their toe in it seasonally and then maybe end up transitioning to year round or just like straight up leaving if you're just done with it. Um, but so you can see that their summer season is ending in October, the end of October, and then their winter season is Thanksgiving to April 15th. Um, and they do mention that they have a short few weeks in between the seasons. Um, and if you're full time, you can use that few weeks in between their seasons to like either work at a different hotel um, that they're um, that that's underneath their company, or just take time off and travel. And I think that's pretty cool. If you're going to be looking at that as a full time option, then then you know like you have um, guaranteed weeks um, in between the summer and winter season working there where you'll be able to like take a vacation. Um, and then as long as you maintain 32 hours a week, um, you do get benefits, um, medical, dental, vision, PTO, and sick time, cool beans. And then they do have a list of the jobs that they're currently hiring for and then the pay listed there. Um, Y'all know, if you don't know, I'm a front desk agent type of person. Um, up to $21 an hour to me sounds pretty nice. Uh, but again, you have to balance that out obviously with um, your housing options. Um, so that's nice. I do have um, PBX operator. That's a pretty good pay for PBX operator because while it can be busy, I've worked um, as a PBX operator. And while it can be busy, you typically are on the phone with people for a shorter amount of time, for a shorter amount of time than like if you were a reservation agent. Um, as a reservation, as a reservation agent, you could be on the phone with people for like 30, 45 minutes. As a PBX operator, your job is basically to be able to direct calls to where they need to go so that people can actually speak to people who can help them and not just like speaking to you. Like you're just supposed to direct the calls. You're not supposed to sit there and actually like fix complex issues and stuff. Like you give information, but at the end of the day, like the calls are supposed to be directed to somebody else. Um, so they have the, 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 the hourly wage um, listed for these jobs, which is really nice. Um, so that you know what you're getting into um, ahead of time. So this is, um, did I, I was thinking about applying for something here. Um, again, if you don't know, I'm currently a manager, I'm a front desk manager, and I'm trying to stick with jobs that are supervisory in some sort of way. And so I'm trying to go backwards and trying to go forward. Um, and that's mainly the reason why I hadn't applied to anything in this company, because they don't seem to have any um, managerial position open. Sometimes I will go to the actual company's website to see if there are um, jobs that they've been like holding back. Um, sometimes it happens, sometimes not all of their jobs will be posted on CoolWorks. So if you find a place on CoolWorks you really like and you don't see a job that really piques your interest, um, you can, um, or I would, um, what is happening here? I would recommend going to the company's website and seeing if they have anything extra there. Um, but yeah, 
I know some people feel some sort of way about Aspen. Like when I was in Breck, I know that a lot of the the ski folk, the ski bums, is that what they call them, ski bums? Um, kind of feel some some type of way about Aspen the Vale. Um, I haven't been to Aspen myself, um, so I'm not sure like on a personal note how things are there. Um, but I mean, it's a seasonal job, so you can kind of like feel it out. You don't have to be, that's the cool thing about seasonal jobs. You don't have to be totally committed to it. Um, yeah, pictures are cute. It's cute. Mm, oh, fancy. I think this is the one I looked up with a the um prices for the realms were like exorbitant felix coffee shop that's some expensive coffee i know Ooh, those velvet couches this is a fancy place like this is yeah oh oh lord child okay so hotel jerome cool thing um i would totally apply if i saw a managerial position I was trying to get to their actual company website, but it wasn't pulling up. And that's probably just my internet problems. Um, it's, it's probably me, not them. I'll probably look at that later because I actually do. I, I think I would like to go to Aspen, actually. All right. So this is a job that ain't is not in my, like, it's not something that I desire. I think I know what I like, and this is not something that I think that I would I mean, I could see myself doing this for like maybe two months or so, <laughs> but I think I'm looking for like a year round position somewhere. So I don't, I don't think I would like to be in Alaska year round. Um, so this is Borealis, Borealis, Borealis Base Camp. Um, one of my front desk people is really excited about applying for this job, one of the jobs here. Um, oh, it's cute, Borealis. <laughs> <laughs> Borealis Base Camp. Um, the pictures look real cute. Um, it'd be so cool. I don't think the Northern Lights are in, are they in winter, winter? I don't know. You have to look that up yourself. So, I mean, this is properly in like middle of nowhere. Um, so 45 minutes from Fairbanks, Alaska, which to my knowledge is like the, the one of the bigger cities. Um, so here are the jobs they have posted. Front of house manager, server, guest service agent, rover. Like Mars rover? I don't know. You're going to be Mars rover. Um, so, wait a minute. Where's all the info? Confusion. I have a ton of information in my notes about this. Where? What am I missing? Let me just click on one of these jobs. I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so um, this is just for a guest service agent. Um, guest service agent. Uh, I think guest service agent is a, an umbrella for these different jobs here. Um, so front desk, activities, desk shifts, housekeeping. I remember this job because I was kind of shocked. Housekeeping doesn't typically make more than front desk. And I feel some sort of way about that. Like, I don't want to be like dogging on housekeepers. I swear, because I don't like doing housekeeping. It's not my cup of tea. But in the same like breath, like look at the housekeeping duties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at front desk duties. Checking guests in and out, providing guests with available activities at the time of check-in, walking them to their room, answering the phone, scheduling tours, preparing guests for activities in what way? And then you're still cleaning. Why is the front desk cleaning? Cleaning what? Maintaining a disinfected and clean lodge. Clean the bathrooms as needed. I don't clean bathrooms. I barely like to clean my own. No, I don't do that. So I honestly, I don't think this is fair. <laughs> If you're going to apply for this, if you are really interested in working in Alaska, I think this looks like a good opportunity. Um, and I'll tell you more about what they're offering here. But I would, if you've got any kind of experience at the front desk, I would ask for 17 because I don't feel like this is, this is fair, personally. Um, so let's see. 
I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be into working outdoors. I mean, it looks like the majority of their facilities is like, you will be outside moving around. This is the only picture that they are offering here. So I don't, I don't think there's going to be much here as far as um, proper facilities. They do have staff housing. Um, it's definitely going to be double occupancy. I don't think they have enough facilities for anything other than that. Um, so common area with Netflix, um, restrooms, awesome. Uh, laundry, commercial kitchen. They have a staff chef that prepares staff lunch and dinner. And breakfast is self served. We stock oatmeal, cereal, and fruits. Awesome. Um, staff housing is $50 a week, which is what, $200 a month? Sounds about right, math. Um, and then they do have a shuttle to Fairbanks once a week um, if you need extra. So that's nice. So I, I probably wouldn't, like, if I was to do this, I would definitely not bring my car because driving on Alaskan roads in wintertime, no thanks. I can barely drive my car right now. All right, so, yeah, if you're someone that's interested in going to Alaska, um, I mean, I think the, the pay is pretty fair, especially since you get... Um, free lunch and dinner. Um, and then all you have to worry about paying for is, of course, your transportation there and then the $200 a month for housing, which is not bad. But again, front desk, y'all, y'all need to be asking for, for 17. This ain't, this ain't right. Sorry. Uh, Borealis camp, base camp. Looks pretty cool. Yes, I'm eating seaweed. I'm trying to like wean myself off of potato chips right now and I'm really got a hankering for something salty. This one gets stuck in my teeth real bad. Sorry. Okay, so the next place I want to talk about is Hotopia. So this was a bit different because they have different um, Hotopias in the U.S. So originally, from my knowledge, Hotopia was a European thing. Like their company was um, in Europe. Mainly, Hotopia started off in Europe only and have uh, moved over to the U.S. And basically, they're like a glamping, camping type of um, like accommodation uh, place place that has glamping and camping. Um, but what's really cool about them is that they have different types of like little... Um, cabins and stuff that you can stay in but i would look it up and see like they have really cool like you could stay in like legit a tent but then they also have like these little tiny house looking things the um seems like a really cool business like you i i don't i don't have any connection to camping i didn't go camping when i was a kid but i respect places that like you can be out in nature and like it's like a tent like structure but you're not like on the ground outside and this is um, their location in Southern Maine. Um, so that's more about like what the business is, like what it offers to customers. As an employee, um, I chose this job to tell you guys about because it's an international company. Um, and they're expanding. Hotopia is pursuing study development in North America and internationally in places like France, Netherlands, and China. Uh, in 2022, Hutopia manages over 60 outdoor resorts with glamping style accommodations. That's pretty cool. I think that that means like if you're trying to get into something and stay into something, you can easily rise in the ranks. Um, rise, a son of stuff country. You can easily rise in the ranks and, and be able to move around. Maybe, you know, you know, stay in the U.S. or go to Canada and work in some of the um, outdoor resorts there um, or go to some of the Hutopias in, in Europe. Um, so I think that that's a good um, idea. Like when people talk about living and working in different countries, some people work with international companies that allow them to move um, 
and like still work for that company. So that could be, you know, an end goal for this type of um, position. I think the thing with this one, let's see, Hotopia. Because of the nature of this job, well, because of the nature of this business, their locations are only open for a shorter time uh, frame than other places. So like when you're doing like outdoor accommodations, you don't want to be in the dead of winter in a tent. So I think that this job in particular is just in, uh, let's see, the summer season. Let's see, what is there? Live on site for free. Some meals are included. It doesn't really go into detail about that, but I assume like maybe you get maybe like lunch and you have to take care of your other meals. Um, let's see. I think it's also interesting that they're really seeming they really seem to be catering towards people who maybe don't have any experience working because it's like you don't need any previous experience. We will teach you everything and support you, which is like awesome. So this probably be a really good place. Like maybe not now because their locations are open summer and fall, but I'm pretty sure around October, you know, they'd be closing these properties um, because of the weather. Um, but this might be a good option if you don't have a lot of experience and you may be looking for something in the summertime. Um, pay is pretty, pretty um, not bad. Housing is free. Pay is not bad. Um, and even down here, what it says, you don't even have to have a resume. <laughs> like if you don't, have any experience? I'm just saying you can just write about yourself. Like who says that? Respect. Yeah. So it looks like housing is free, so you don't have to pay for housing, but you may have to pay for some meals. And as always, you have to pay to get yourself to where you're going. So yeah, like so I was looking at a job with Hatopia. Um, and it's not listed here. I think it was with the one in California and I'm not down to live in California. I ain't about that life. Um, but it was an assistant front, it was some sort of assistant manager position, but I'm just like really not that outdoorsy of a person and I really can't fake it and I have no desire to fake it. And I think with places like this that I really have a, an emphasis on outdoor experiences, I just, it ain't gonna work. They're gonna see right through me. They always do. Okay, so, Hutopia. Also, the name just makes me, like, wanna giggle, Hutopia. All right, last but not least, this is an actual place that I, I actually, like, emailed because I was really interested in applying. Um, and it's the Beaver Creek Resort. So, it's a veil property. So do with that information what you will. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really craving some potato chips right now. Um okay, so no 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 no. I think the thing with Beaver Creek. So I actually emailed them and I got some information. So because they didn't really give, this is not a lot of information about the housing. It just says housing is limited for the winter season and it's based on the hiring department's discretion. We offer options for different types of housing and they are located conveniently close to public transportation. Employee housing feels quickly. Um, but yeah, I emailed them and so I do have more details about the housing. So from the email I received, um, there are single and double occupancy or single and shared occupancy um, options. So the single occupancy is $800 a month, which mind you, this is in um, Beaver Creek, which is um, not too far um, from Vail. That's a, that is pretty cheap for housing. So $800 a month for your own like apartment is pretty dope to me. Did I just say dope? Ew. Um, and then shared housing is $500 a month. What I was told is that shared housing is, in this case, a three-bedroom apartment in Avon. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that, but that's the nearest, like, city. 
Weaver Creek is pretty small. And literally it's just comprised of the Beaver Creek Resort. So there's that information for you, the housing information. Like a lot of area um, of the ski resort towns, um, they do have um, some buses in transit. Um, I think if you're applying for a job and you're expected to commute from work to um, to the resort and you don't have a trans like a car, I just make sure you talk to them about that and make sure that you can adequately get to and from work um, without a vehicle. There's not much here. These pictures, they're all just like, I guess that is that that must be the Beaver Creek area. It doesn't look like Avon. Avon. <laughs> really, y'all? We y'all get a minute. So stop. Um, so what did we say? We said housing is available, single eight hundred dollars a month, shared five hundred dollars. One of the things that I enjoy hearing about, um, a lot of these ski resorts, they have this huge benefit of like, oh, you get to have a ski pass. But here's the thing: not everybody wants to ski, and so um, I read it somewhere. I have it in my notes. Um, but you can either take advantage of the ski pass or you can get cash. He has some money uh, as an equivalent to that. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, there wasn't a whole lot. Where are the jobs? It's on their actual website. Cause I remember I saw the job that I wanted to apply to on their website. But like, I'll show the job that I was going to apply to. Um, I emailed the lady about the job because I'm going to stay here until October. Like, I don't want to leave here early. I've kind of committed to it. I have no reason to leave here early. And so I'm not looking to, like, head out to another job that soon. And so, like I said before, a lot of the jobs right now that are posted are, like, looking for people to start sooner rather than later. And I emailed the lady about... Okay, so I found a job that I was looking at. It was the assistant front office manager position. My problem with this job is that I realized that, well, I'm, I'm a bit confused because I emailed the lady asking about the assistant front desk manager position, and she told me that there was housing. And then, I don't know, on their website it says it's not available. So that's something that needs to be clarified. Um, but yeah, for the Beaver Creek position, um, for Beaver Creek jobs, um, I would just go to their website because it looks like they don't really have a whole lot listed on their um, CoWORKs profile. Uh, but I think I'm just pretty, pretty partial to jobs in Colorado. Um, and I always love the option to have single accommodation. I think that that is... It's not always common. Like a lot of places, they don't even have enough accommodations to offer people single occupancy. And so you don't even have the option. But it's nice to have the option, even if you have to pay more. Like it makes sense that you would have to pay more. Um, and they also have seasonal and year round positions. So it's interesting that she was looking for, well, the job that I was looking for is a year-round position, so it's not that surprising that she's looking for someone to start in the next two, and th two to three weeks, which, like, I can't start in the next two or three weeks. Um, but this is probably one where you could, like, start later if you needed to. Like, if you already have a seasonal job and you're not looking to leave that seasonal job, like, soon, the ski resorts and stuff would, would be what I would assume be a little bit more flexible with your start date. So yeah, those are the jobs that I have found recently that have piqued my interest um, for, for one reason or another. Um, I'm hoping you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, again, I haven't really been that impressed with what's on CoolWorks right now, right now. I'm hoping again, like I said, in the next three weeks or so, there'll be some more interesting jobs being posted um because honestly i just i don't think 
I don't think most of the jobs that are looking to like fail positions that have been vacated recently for their summer seasons are worth applying to, like for the most part, because they're just such a short amount of time. You know, like I said, most of the summer jobs are going to be ending in October. And it's just like, only you can decide if it's like worth it for you to apply to some of those places. But for me, I'm just like, the amount of money it's costing to fly to places right now, it's just ridiculous. And so, I mean, you could end up spending quite a bit of money to fly one way somewhere just to turn around two months later and fly back where you came from or, or to fly somewhere else. So not my cup of tea, but if you can make it work financially, go, go ahead, sweetie. I mean, if you can make it work financially, go ahead. You know, do the thing. Do the thing. But yeah, um, that's it for now. I don't even think... I always look on Cool Works like every day, probably twice a day I look on Cool Works. And today, especially, I didn't see anything that looks like worth like applying to personally. I think my um, my standards may be a little high. Today in particular, I don't think I saw anything worth applying to. Edel Vice is back up there. If y'all remember that video I made about Edel Vice. Um, I still think I like do that. I think somebody, what are you guys commented about applying for Edel Vice? Or Edel Vice? I forget how the lady who I interviewed with um, said it because that was like one of the first questions I asked her. I'm like, how do you say the name of this lodge? A device. I think it's a cool opportunity if you can afford to do it because, frankly, they don't pay that much. And I remember her saying that um, basically because of the the pay system, like it takes people a while to get their first paycheck. So I think. They pay for you to to go out there, which is like amazing. But you don't you one you don't know what you're gonna do, and two like if you decide to leave early, then you have to pay for your own flight, which makes sense. It's only fair. But um, I still think it's a really good opportunity. I just like you think you're gonna have to have a good amount of money, um, to actually be able to be there and enjoy yourself. But yeah, like I didn't see anything that interesting posted recently, like within the past two days. Um, ew, twelve dollars an hour. No, sir. Wait a minute, and one free meal a day, and it's only twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> Get out! Like, really? That's that is very um disrespectful canoe place in and cottages oh how cute <laughs> how quaint the only job they have posted is hotel chief engineer that's interesting not the typical job you see posted on cool works i'll say that All right, well, I'm not going to spend too much time here because it's already almost 2 o'clock in the morning and I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> I bet I have a sleep to late nights. <laughs> Hello. Conversations with a stranger. I barely know. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys have liked that. I hope you've seen something interesting. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.